think, sorry, I just had a formal going. Um, hi, Josh. Um, Heinrich Klassen spoke to us a little bit earlier and suggested that teams don't, don't really like playing in Potchefstroom Stream because there's not a lot happening there. But uh, we know Manus is not far from there in terms of his hometown. And, and I wanted to ask you, you know, do Australia enjoy Potch? Uh, I've only been here once before, I think a few years back, and um, it was only for two days. So uh, still getting to know the place. We're only obviously here again for a couple of days. But um, yeah, Manus... Um, hometown, I guess you could say, and he had uh, some good success here last time with 100, so um, hopefully he backs it up again and, and does it again. Yeah, and just to, in terms of the actual cricket, um, th there seems to be the suggestion that maybe South Africa are just lacking in getting the foundations and the basics right, and Australia are doing that much better. Is that how you would assess things, or, or is there something else that looks obviously different between the two sides? Uh, no, I tend to agree with that a little bit. I think... Um, I think obviously we were, we, that first game was pretty close. We we're pretty not lucky, but we um, we got away with one there in the end with a, a nice partnership down the order. But um, I think our, our top order is laying the platform pretty well. Um, they're showing quite a lot of aggression. Uh, we lost a few wickets in the first game, but came off in the second game and, and got a monster score. So um, I guess from a bowling point of view as well, we're we're doing the basics pretty well. Um, a fair few guys have had a game now and have have had a bowl. So. We, we knew the conditions quite well there in, in Bloom, and I guess it's just about assessing them out here again and, and sort of adapting as quick as we can. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Telford Vice. Thanks, Dave. Um, Josh, I don't know, are you able to confirm an 11 for us? Ah, uh, no, I've got no idea. <laughs> Just what do you think the, I, I realise maybe you're not terribly involved in this conversation of selection, but what do you think the, the decision will be, you know, choosing between batters and bowlers or spinners uh, and quicks? What do you think, where's the, the conversation? Uh, I think we'll probably try and see if we've got 11 fit players at first. Um, I think in terms of conditions, it probably, thinking about last time, I think it was a day game and it, it did quite a bit early, so I think in... Being a day night, I think the wicket's going to be pretty good. Um, it might be back to you know picking an extra quick and only having the one spinner and I guess making up the overs with all-rounders, whoever they may be. So we've got quite a few. It's just a matter of, of who's pulled up well from the last game and um, I guess trying a few different things in this series as well with the World Cup looming and um, trying to find a nice balance and, and see what works. So there's, we've got a few options on the table and I guess we'll see how the wicket looks and, and we'll come up with an 11. Thank you. Morgan. Thanks, Dave. Hi, Josh. Uh, the World Cup is fast approaching. It's less than a month away. Have you guys managed to tick a couple of those boxes in the two previous ODIs in Bloom? Yeah, I think um, I think we've certainly tried a few different options. Um, and I think a few have worked. It's good to see some guys under some pressure. I think a few of the bowlers in particular last game with with the batters coming quite hard. Um, I know we had a big total, but it can sometimes put more pressure on the bowlers knowing you, you pretty much have to defend a score like that and there's, there's no other options. So it was quite an inexperienced lineup uh, apart from Zamps and, and the boys got the job done. So I think they learned a lot out of that game. Um, in particular, probably, you know, Nathan Ellis, Sean Abbott, Aaron Hardy, guys like that, um, you know, did a great job through the middle there and in sort of drawing it up and, and buying the right lengths and, and taking the wickets that we needed. So um, some good signs there. And, and again, with our batting, there's some the really good signs in particular at the top with, with guys like Travis Head and and, uh, and David Warner. So, um, yeah, we're sort of ticking along nicely, I think. And, and it's just about keep building towards the World Cup. And you guys have obviously, the series hasn't been won by a long way yet, but should it must have been a bit of a, a you know, monkey of your back, uh, breaking that ODI series duck in recent times in South Africa. Yeah, that's right. I um, obviously been here once before on an ODI trip and we lost 3-0. So, and a few guys played the one before that and, and didn't get up either. So it's great to get a, obviously that first win and then back it up again the other night. So we know it's a five-match series and um, you know it's 2-0 at the moment. And we've played some good cricket. It's just about continuing that on um, over the next few games. Thanks, John. Jack from cricket.com.au. You there, Jack? I 
have that idea. Thank you. Away you go. Uh, Josh, I guess first of all, um, uh, are you playing tomorrow? And I guess second of all, uh, talk us through with, with eight games to go ahead of the World Cup, you know, what that rotation of the fast bowlers is looking like because obviously you've got uh, Mitch and, and Pat out at the moment and, and what that might look like going forward. Yeah, I believe I'll play tomorrow. Um, sort of just spacing them out, being a five-match series. Um, they're quite tightly put together, so uh, miss the second one, play the third, and, and probably do the same for the last two. So um, in terms of all the quicks, I think, you know, we've got a few here that are doing really well in, in Nathan and, and Sean, and then a few all-rounders as well. So um, it was a bit disappointing for, for Spence to do a little hamstring nick and, and not be available. It was good, would have been good, really good to see him um, out there playing these games. But um, as you mentioned, we've got Mitch and Pat coming back in hopefully for, for in, the Indian uh, series before the World Cup. And as you mentioned, there's still a lot of games to go yet. So um, no doubt the Quicks will play a huge part, not here, not only here, but in the, in the World Cup as well. So the more match practice we can get um, without sort of overstressing ourselves and, and doing too much and forcing injuries, um, you know, we'll give everyone a good, a good run at it and, and go from there. Is that where the guys like Spencer, Michael Neese are coming over? Um, you've got Nathan Ellis there with you in the, in the squad as well. Is that where they play a big role in you know, helping you guys uh, stay fresh but also providing that, that valuable feedback um, in terms of match practice? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, you know, it's a great time to, to build some depth as well. We, we've you know, still got some injuries here and, and at home within the quicks. Um, so it's definitely great to have the younger guys here sort of pushing, pushing us and getting some match experience and um, creating that depth um, within the squad. So, um, yeah, it's been a, it's a good sign so far. And we saw uh, Stoinis open the bowling in the first game and then you had Trav Head the other night. Uh, can you share a little bit of insight into the thinking behind that um, and potentially moving forward, how that might play a role in, in India as well? Yeah, I think... You know, I think in the first game, Stoinis taking the new ball was, um, you know, if, if Sean Abbott's going to play, he's probably going to play as the third quick and he's going to bowl where he bowled the other night, um, that first change role. So it's just him nailing down that spot. And I guess the only other option was, was Stoinis to take the new ball. And he's done that in the T20s previous. Um, but I expect, you know, with, with Mitch and Pat back as well, that um, we'll probably share the first handovers between us, I think, more often than not. And in terms of the wickets you've got over there, obviously it's a bit of a stark contrast between the first two. Uh, second one was high scoring, first one was quite difficult to bat, uh, a little bit too paced. Um, how do you go sort of using that to prepare, then knowing that the wickets in India will be a whole, a whole lot different as well? Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what the, the wickets are like. I think they're going to be pretty good for batting most of the time, as they usually are around the world in, in white ball cricket. Um, you know, fans like to see fours and sixes and, and high scores. So um, we saw a glimpse of that the other night. The first wicket was, um, it was an interesting one. It probably wasn't as bad as 230, but um, got a little bit better at nine, I think. The pace got more consistent. The bounce got maybe a bit more consistent, but um, we still saw a few shoot low even the other night. So... I remember here last time at Potch, the wicket was wicket was pretty good after the first sort of hour being an, an early start. But yeah, Indian wickets are going to be pretty good, I think, for the majority.